I'd like to call this special city council to meet it, to, meeting to order on July 18, 2018. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mr. Mays. Present. Mr. Davis. Present. Mr. Guerra. Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Present. Mr. Winfrey. Present. Mr. Griggs. Present. Ms. Worthing. Present. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, reading of the, the, well, let's do this. Let's do the Pledge of Allegiance, and we'll have that by Councilman Griggs, please. Mr. President. Councilor. May I ask for a moment of silence for Francisco Espinosa? Yes, and also a moment of silence for Superintendent Quincy Marshall as well. Thank you. Reading of the disorderly persons city code subsection. It says any person that persists in disrupting this meeting would be in violation of Flint City Code section 31-10, disorderly conduct, assault and battery, and disorderly persons, and would be subject to arrest for misdemeanor. Any person who prevents the peaceful and orderly conduct of any meeting will be given one warning. If they persist in disrupting the meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest. Violators shall be removed from the meetings. This special city council meeting was called for the purpose of conducting a public hearing on the proposed annual action plan for fiscal year 2018-2019. And ESG grants. In that regard, I would like to ask Ms. Suzanne Wilcox to the Director of Planning and Development Department to come forward to present a brief overview of our annual action plan. Following her remarks, we will begin public comment. Thank you, Council President, and good evening, members of the Flint City Council. Um, I'd like to, before I, before I present an overview, I'd like to introduce a few members of our community and economic development team who are here with me tonight. Um, some of them are new faces, but I just wanted to introduce, um, introduce them to you. So to my right, I have um, Carissa Dotson, uh, who is our accounting coordinator in the department and is working closely with us on this plan. Sarah Qualmaz, who is a new program manager in the department. Roy Lash, who is a CD grant coordinator. Um, they both um, participated in the process, and Roy was instrumental in working on the review and evaluation of the applications. And then we have a new program manager, um, our second program manager. Her name is Karen Sturdivant. And she is actually, as you know, I've been um, in the community development block grant administrator role for several years. Karen is our new program manager, and she's actually replacing me. So next year, um, I'm still, I'm in the planning, and I see Maurice's face. Um, I'm in the planning and development director's position, but my program manager position is being uh, filled by Karen. So next year, she will be handling the, um, the CD community development functions for the department, or the division of community and economic development. So I just wanted you to have an opportunity to meet them, meet some of the people who have been working on this um, on this program and process. So tonight's public hearing is really the opportunity for citizens to comment on the recommendations and on the draft action plan, which was made available on June 24th. Um, we've been going through this process really since last December, and it culminated in the review and evaluation of several applications for community development block grant, for home investment partnership, and for emergency solutions grant. So what um, has been published and what is available to the public are the recommendations uh, that were developed through the evaluation process. The CWAC members that all of you appointed um, participated with us in that process. 
culminating in these recommendations that are in front of you tonight. We are in the midst of a 30-day comment period, as you know. Uh, tonight, the public hearing will be held, and we are looking to the, we bring a resolution to you on Monday for approval, as we talked about um, in the timeline with Council President Winfrey, Councilman Mays, um, on the timeline to submit our action plan to HUD by next Friday. So um, what you have in front of you are the recommendations. Our allocation this year is um, for the three different programs. For CDBG, uh, we're being allocated $3,872,807. For home, we're being allocated $909,367. And for ESG, we're being allocated $320,100, I'm sorry, $815. So the recommendations um, total those amounts. You'll see there's two categories, as we discussed with Council President Winfrey and Councilman Mays. There's two categories that are um, to be determined. One is home. Uh, we, had, uh, we had some excess funding in terms of the amount of, of applications that we received. We didn't receive enough requests for applications, so we will actually be doing an RFP for that. And then in ESG, we have about $25,000 that we are also looking to do another RFP for rapid rehousing purposes. So those are the only two uh, funding sources that are not entirely allocated. CDBG is fully allocated. So with that, I'd like, to, um, I'd like to stop and give members of the public an opportunity to comment. All comments will be assembled and compiled into the actual action plan, which will be finalized and again, as I said, submitted to HUD next week. So everyone that submits a comment tonight or if we receive written comments, those are all incorporated into the document and we will respond to them. Mr. President. Councilman Mace. Could I ask through you to Suzanne, could she introduce um, the people with her again, the staff, and then point out who Karen is. Could you do that again for me? I missed the introduction. Sure. 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 Um, immediately to my right is Carissa Dotson. Carissa, again, is the accounting coordinator. To the right of her is Sarah Quelmas. Sarah is a program manager who manages our home and housing programs. Um, uh, Roy Lash is a CD grant coordinator. And he works on community development programs um, in many internal city departments. And then our final person is Karen Sturdivant, and she's the new CD grant court, I'm sorry, CD program manager who will be handling basically the action plan and consolidated plan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Wilcox. At this time, we are asking for comments from the public. And when you come to the microphone, we ask that each speaker give their name and address, please. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Quincy Murphy, um, 322 East Myrtle Avenue. I'm also a representative of Urban Transformation Development. We applied for some funding. We didn't get an interview. Didn't know the recommendations were until tonight. I met with um, Councilman Garrow. We went through what we do in the community. We've been doing this work for over 25 years, dealing with blight. It's not working. In this application on page, I don't have a page, but up under the um, number five summary of public comment, regarding community needs, eliminating of slum and blight. That's mainly a lot of the work that I do in the community. It's a struggle to be out there volunteering for 20 years without the necessary resources to be able to do what we're trying to do. Everybody don't have the vision that we have when dealing with blight. Um, so I'm concerned that um, Applicants that didn't apply, that applied, didn't get to even get interviewed. Usually, well, probably about five or six years ago, when we used to apply, we got interviewed and still got denied. I haven't received any money since um, City Administrator Gregory Eason was the City Administrator, and they gave us 60000 up under Salem Housing, and we executed that very well. This time, we went up under Habitat to try to apply for some funding. No interview whatsoever. 
My other concern um, is um, housing, housing rehab. Um, when I looked at um, objective two, promote equity and social justice in housing. Um, Councilman Mays, I can recall you um, bringing up a statement of houses need to be demolished in your area. And one of the um, things that the staff um, stated was, in order to use community development block grant dollars to demolish houses, you got to have some kind of housing development plan over there in that area. So down there where my mother lived on Marengo in between Industrial and Selby, there's houses down there been um, vacant since Johnny Tucker was the councilman. Johnny Coleman, Bryant Nolden, Kerry Nelson, and it's still abandoned. And when you go to the land bank and you ask them, can we get some demo dollars? They don't have it. The hardest hit funds stop at North Street, from North to Saginaw. So when you go and um, ask, can I get a new roof put on my house? We don't do homes in that particular area. It's a problem. My time is up. I'll be following up with a letter. Point of order, Mr. President. Yes. His time technically ain't up. No. Right. He would have about seven more minutes under the rules. It's ten minutes, you know. So you get. So, uh, and he's correct, uh, uh, Mr. Murphy. So, proceed. But I feel special today. <laughs> um, my issue is. When it comes down to community development block grant dollars over the past years, people like Quincy Murphy that's been out there in the trenches working ought to have a seat at the table to figure out what really need to happen. Because everybody don't have our vision, especially those who don't live in our community. And I'm not saying I have the answer, but being denied 99% um, of the time, I should have done got something right by now. I feel like the process, as far as when people put in applications, mm -hmm. at least we ought to get an interview and, and plead our case. One of the issues that I met with my councilman was to let you see the behind the scenes of what it takes for us to do what we do in the community to function. And you know the struggle is real because you saw it firsthand. Um, there is um, massive amounts of blight and the blight elimination plan with the blight department downtown, downstairs or the blight court is not going to address the issues of land bank owned properties that's the major um, issue in a community dealing with blight. The hardest hit funds does not address right. neighborhoods that's um, underserved. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, 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 that's right. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Community development block grant dollars does not allow for funds to demolish homes in areas that don't have housing development. Housing rehab dollars does not target the whole city of Flint, it only target a certain area. You have two chodos, Habitat for Humanity and Communities First. If you go and call and ask somebody, I need to get my house rehab or I need a new roof, they gonna say call Habitat. Or it was called Flint Nip. That don't exist no more. The people in my neighborhood is struggling to try to find housing rehab dollars. It may not be no emergency. So in this summary, when they talk about um, emergency housing and um, it won't address the, that area because you can't find an agency that's working in that area to help a young lady down the street from my mother, 84 years old, living with barely plumbing in her home, barely a roof over her head, barely windows in her house. So if, who go help her? But you're talking about in this five-year plan, housing. If we don't look at the underserved areas when it comes down to community development block grant dollars in this five-year summary, and y'all submit this 
five-year summary to the state, we locked in. So because y'all may approve this, or hopefully y'all may reconsider, those people that's in that gray area that house been sitting for over 30 years and all kind of raccoons and rats and all kind of animals coming out of there go continue to be there. Because when you call Michelle Weiler at have, um, Land Bank, they don't have the funds and the only funds that they working with is hard as hit funds. 1,800 houses demolished out of hardest hit funds and none of them hit down there where my mother live at. The whole industrial area, houses, one after the next, abandoned, open, cross the street, abandoned, open, no, 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 no funds to demolish them. So here we finna submit a five-year plan that will not address that, will not address those people that want to stay, that don't want to move, that need to have some, some kind of help to rehab their house, don't have it, no agencies out there um, helping. If you call a G card, you gonna be on a waiting list forever. And they only doing weatherization. And when they come in and replace the window, the window gotta be hanging out in order for them to replace it. Other than that, they gonna put some plastic up. I think what's happening, these elderly people that's living in these neighborhoods, they gonna wait it out. They gonna move, their kids ain't gonna want the houses because the houses is too. If you read the I-475 history, when the St. John area was around, before they knew that I-475 was coming in, they wouldn't let them people over there get permits or nothing. They let that neighborhood go down so bad to about time they came in to buy out them people, their houses was worth some crumbs. My mother don't plan on moving. My sister don't plan on moving. That 84, Miss Williams that live down the street, she don't plan on moving. Them people been over, they comfortable over there. They love, they, they pay taxes, and they deserve the same housing, social justice objectives to promote equity and social justice and housing as anybody that live on the street with 40 or 50 or 60 houses. It's not happening. It's unfortunate. I, I was, thought I was coming for a committee meeting today, but thank God I came, because this is happening. I wanted to speak on it. I'm not trying to throw nobody under the bus. It ain't targeted at anybody. It's reality. It's the issue. If you read the Civil Rights Report from the water crisis, it was some injustice done and been going on for a whole bunch of years and we need to change this dynamic. When they make an announcement tomorrow, they announcing that $30 million is coming into the city of Flint for the South Side to do some housing development. And as a result of $30 million coming to the South Side of Flint or the borderline of the North End, a little bit off of Fifth Street, Ain't none coming down there over there by where my mom and them been faithfully paying her taxes for years. Ain't none of it coming down there on Russell Street. No rehab dollars is coming over there for those who's left down there in that area to have to, um, that don't want to move, that want to see their house improve. I'm going to close by saying this. We voted for y'all to do the right thing. Enough is enough. I respect the administration and they work that they put in this five-year plan, but it's not getting the job done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Are there other speakers for this public hearing? Are there other speakers for this public hearing? Are there other speakers for this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. At this time on our agenda is now open for the public to speak on any given topic for three minutes. Madam Clerk, 
Would you please call our first public speaker? Yes, Mr. President, our first and only speaker is uh, Mr. Quincy Murphy. Mr. Murphy? Back again. <laughs> um, I just want to invite you guys, as you know, um, we've been doing a lot of work around Dewey Park. Um, we just, probably within the next week, we're going to be closing out the um, $25,000 grant that we got through Community Foundation. We got new basketball courts. We got murals on the court. Um, we're trying to um, put a play and learn. So um, on the murals, we got um, educational little um, historical facts on the courts. Um, talking about different people came from different high schools. On August 8th, we partnered with the city of Flint, um, the Community Foundation United Way to build new playground equipment. Um, we just had a successful um, picnic with um, the Drifters Motorcycle Club up at Dewey Park. It was over 200 people there this um, past weekend. So we're doing great things. We also partnered with the Land Bank. We got about 100 and something um, vacant lots around Dewey Park that we're trying to um, maintain. Um, one of the issues is we don't have no kind of funding to uh, maintain them, so we're going to try to see if um, the land bank will go and clean them up one good time, and then we're going to try to find some residents in the neighborhood. That, um, we got two good lawnmowers. We're going to try to keep them maintained. Since we didn't get no community development block grant dollars, we got, we got to go to a plan B to try to get it done, because regardless whether we get community development block grant dollars, we still going to make it happen, because we in living in a neighborhood where we ain't gonna just sit back and wait on some money to come our way. We gonna get it done regardless. It's just gonna make other people look bad. That um, blight is one of the issues that y'all um, putting in um, community development block grant, and we not benefiting off of any of it. But in the meantime, in between time, we still gonna continue to do what we gonna do. So between now and August eighth, we gonna do what we can to try to um, maintain and clean up all of those vacant lots. It's some big old trees that we don't have the manpower to um, get there. So maybe we can find six or seven volunteers since we can't buy no equipment or rent no equipment to move it out. We're going to try to clean that neighborhood up. So if y'all can, go down Moore Street and Damon Street and look at befores. What you'll be seeing now is befores. Before August 8th, we're going to do some um, after where we're going to go and clean up. If you want to, if y'all riding around, take a lunch break or something, Go up there and look at Dewey Park, look at all the um, park improvements that we've been doing up there. We're going to continue to do some things. And we also um, hopefully cross my fingers, um, pray to God that I think we um, is locked in. We got a donor that's donating some money to um, get the tennis course done. And we're not asking the city of Flint for any funding for this. It's some uh, money coming from some donors because they found out the work that we're doing in Dewey Park. So if y'all can, go up there and look at Dewey Park. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Okay. Uh, now we'll receive final comments from each council member. Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Yeah, um, through you to Suzanne. Suzanne, is this five-year um, plan able to change at any time? It can be changed and amended. So we are not actually asking for approval of the five-year plan. You approved the five-year plan last year. This is just for the action plan. Um, what we added was the executive summary from the consolidated plan from last year so that you can see what the goals and objectives that were approved last year. Any of the five-year plans and stuff can be changed and amended. Uh, amend amendments occurred during the action plan process. The goals and objectives that were established during the consolidated plan planning process are in effect for the next five years. And can it be changed and amended? Um, what you would be changing would be the action plan. The, yeah, but the, we do that a year at a time. Exactly. Yeah, we wouldn't be changing this year. I'm saying in the future can um, those things be changed. I know that the other ones ain't been set yet, but the five-year plan that's referred to in this document, can it be changed and amended? Through, through an amendment process, but typically the five-year plan is not changed, the action plan is changed, so. From year to year. Correct. So we'll look at that. I just wanted to address the public comment. Thank you. The only other comments that I would have is um, through you, Mr. President, to the public and Mr. Murphy. 
Um, I proposed um, three new employees and 50,000 in blight in this um, budget. I didn't have the support. I'll continue to fight for police officers on the street in blight. Those are two categories that Ms. Winfrey Carter and I have talked about, and I guess all the council, so I'm ready to take action. We'll see what happens um, with the final allocations of money. If you say you've talked to Mr. Guerra, we are still talking and looking at agencies on a little leeway we got. We don't know what we'll do, if anything, but um, I appreciate the comments in the public hearing, and I look forward to the process of actually getting to what we will actually dole out. Thank you, Mr. President. Any other counsel? Councilman Davis. And then Councilman Thank you, Mr. Garrett. President. <clears throat> I'd like to say to Mr. Murphy, uh, he actually nailed it because I'm from the North End as well, and I became a council member because of the concerns of the residents. And the way I know Mr. Murphy being an advocate for the North End and all of the stuff he does, it's hard to get help over there. Now, if this document here going to cause it to be more inclusive, I can see it. I see the staff right there. But when a person as such as Mr. Murphy try to acquire different things, whether it be from a grant or whatever, it seems like nonprofit people tend to get it instead of residents that's out here actually rolling their sleeves up getting the work done. A lot of nonprofit, they, they tend to only profit they self. The community does the work for free. This man does a lot of work as well as I do a lot of work in the community. But the stipulations, the qualifications, always rule us not being able to qualify for none of the benefits. It's time now to quit playing games and include the whole community. The part of the community which is, is they at an economic disadvantage. If y'all going to sit there and help everybody, I can, I can see 100% going for this. But when it get to the qualification, we seem not to qualify. Certain people always qualify. Whoever got the best grant writer, they tend to get the money, not the one doing the most in the community. Now, it's very frustrating the way land bank is set up. Immunity with the blight, but yet some of my constituents in here and just about justify them being immune when everybody else, when we say blight, it come to find out that they talking about my blight, not land bank's blight. We got to mow our yard, but they ain't got to mow theirs. That's not fair to nobody far as a public safety issue with kids in a neighborhood. So I'm saying this, insurance is too high on the North End, people don't have money, whether it be running water, the water cut off, whatever the reason may be. But when you start doing economic empowerment, include everybody and make it that everybody qualify. I know that sitting here, whether it be the rubric or the marijuana rules and regulation, people tend to get unqualified because of the qualifications. That can't continue no more. We sitting here to change, at least I'm sitting here to change the paradigm of that North End. And it's not a game to see people suffering, not struggling, suffering over there. And it's not fair. So when we write these policies, whether it be ordinances, if we build and stuff, I notice other people could do it easier than other people. We don't have the money, but we need to be a little bit more lenient the way you come up with the qualifications and look at everybody applicant, even if that means do away with a lot of these so-called nonprofits, and I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, Councilman Guerra? Yeah, I think it's a, the issue of blight is definitely important throughout the city of Flint, but specifically in the third ward. Uh, it's hard to drive through any of the streets without seeing those issues, so I do uh, not only feel your pain, but I see the same things you see every single day. And Quincy, I want to thank you for all the work you've done over there at Dewey Park. Um, I got a chance to check out the murals that are recently just got done. Uh, I went up there on the last day of the painting, and they look absolutely amazing. And I plan on getting out there and playing some basketball pretty soon. Um, so I want to get with you after this, though, on some of the dates for some of the cleanups that might not be set in stone uh, so we can create some events and try to get the word out uh, to the community as well. I think if we had... 100 more Quincy Murphys in the city of Flint, I think we'd be really, really well off. So thank you for the work, and uh, I want to thank Planning and Development, too, for writing, uh, doing a lot of work and working on this as well. Any other council person? Oh, Councilwoman Winfrey Carter. Um, I would like to publicly thank um, Mr. Quincy Murphy for doing, you know, the work that you do in the community. Um, blight is a critical, 
critical issue. I mean, all over the city of Flint. And um, I feel your pain because when I drive around the Fifth Ward and I see all of the blighted areas, I, <laughs> it makes me cry. So um, I just want to say to you, Quincy, just keep doing the work that you're doing. And um, it's going to pay off. And we're going to, you know, I'm going to work with um, Councilman Mays and um, Councilman um, Guerrero to see what we can do to, um, you know, help you and help the overall community as far as um, this blight problem that we have. Thank you. Any other council person? <laughs> okay, drift back to her. Okay. Uh, Mr. Murphy, you have worked in this community and continue to work in this community for a long time. But I want to go just a step further. Uh, Councilman Mays brought out a, uh, a, a really good point, and that's an action plan can be changed. This council person is going to see what we can do to change that action plan to address some of the issues that you've addressed here today. You've done a lot of good work, continued it, and you've made the case of how it's important that we get dollars to abate blight, which is what you're doing. So this council person is going to be talking to all the folks that's necessary to see if there's a, there is a way we can change this action plan to include that area that you're working in. And then I want you to be a part of that discussion as well. Any other council persons? Mr. President. Councilman. Yeah, I applaud the council for setting up this public hearing and this special council meeting, the council and the staff, and I'm now looking forward to adjourning this meeting and going into committee meeting, and I'll move to adjourn. But I'd also like to thank Suzanne and her staff for keeping this movement of these federal dollars on time and on target. Um, so. Uh, Ms. Wilcox, to you and your staff, uh, take my hat off to you. As we come out of our first year of emergency manager law and we're now working under home rule, I would encourage the public to stay tuned, um, give written comments. There'll be block grant money and public hearings from now on. And um, we look forward to everybody keeping up. But thanks again to Ms. Wilcox and her staff. Ms. President, I would move that this special meeting uh, be adjourned. Okay, and just before that, if I can, I would then withdraw that at this Please, time. because I, I'd just like to indicate that, that the city council uh, uh, committee meetings will immediately commence in the committee room once we adjourn this meeting. So I will entertain your motion. And Mr. President, I should have waited till you asked to entertain a motion to adjourn. That's all right. Um, I would move to adjourn the special council meeting. Is there a second? Councilman Guerra? I second that motion. It's been moved and second. Do we need any discussion? What you think? But I would ask for a roll call. Bro. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Mr. Mays? Yes. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned.